Greetings, this is Ron from the Encyclopedia team. It is with great pleasure we have Dr. Carla Slicko to this interview. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for, uh, to everybody and thank you to you for the nice interview. So Dr. Slicko, before we dive in, our readers would love to get to know you a bit better. Can you tell us a little bit about your background? Yes, of course. Uh, I'm an orthopedic surgeon and uh, now I'm working as a professor of anatomy at the University of Padova. My research is uh, totally focused uh, into fashion from uh, an anatomical and a clinical point of view. Thank you. So let's move to the main focus of this interview. Be of great research interest. Why is it important to study and know better about fascia? Because the fascia was totally forgot in the past, and uh, we uh, they were removed during uh, dissection and during surgery to, to see and to study better the nerve, the muscle, the bone. But in such a way, we have we have forgot one of the key elements of the locomotor system. The fascia are very well innerved. They play a key role in the proprioception, in the motor coordination, in the pain of the patient. And without study the fascia and without treat the fascia, often we are not able to understand the pain of our patient. Thank you for your clarification. So, fascia could be a source of pain and we need to treat it consequently. Could you please explain what myofascia pain is? Absolutely. The, um, we, uh, for example, when we have uh, low back pain, uh, we usually check the disc herniation, uh, the arthritis, uh, or the bad posture. But we have, uh, for example, the thoracolumbar fascia, that is a huge fascial structure that is in the lumbar region that has an amazing amount of nerve endings. And if it is a fascia is stretched in the wrong way, or if it became thicker, or if it, uh, it became more fibrotic, it started to trigger pain. And consequently, we need to understand the fascial alteration and to focus a specific treatment also onto the fascia. So as to become a um, diagnostic also of the fascia. And I think that, for example, the ultrasound could be very useful to understand better the fascial tissue and then to treat a fascial alteration in the proper way. So I hope that in the future we'll be able to treat the fascia as we are able now to treat the joint, the ligament and all the other structure. Also the fascia need a specific treatment. Thank you. So we know you are working on the fascial manipulation technique, which is very popular around the world, including China. So could you please tell us the reason for it being so popular? Fascial manipulation is probably one of the manual techniques that are more precisely focused into the fascia, because we have now a strong scientific background that have support us to create a very precise technique that is able to change the fascial tissue in a very fast way. And consequently, we are able to give with fascial manipulation very fast and permanent result. And for that reason, it is be becoming very popular around the world. Also in China, because there are many points of connection with the concept of meridians, because also in the fascia, we have this line of force along the fascia, that connect many points also far away from the site of pain. And that is a concept that we see in China that is very popular because it combined very well with the concept of the meridians. I can affirm that the fascia can represent the anatomical basis for the meridians, to explain the meridians. And consequently, I really like to teach in China and to find that this uh, agreement between the West and the East medicine. It is so glad to hear that the whole world is working on the medical field to make it better for everyone. 
So, what do you think about the development of this research field, and what's your prospection? What would the future look like? I really hope for the future to have a way to do a diagnosis of facial alteration. To, uh, I hope that we can assess our patient, for example, with the ultrasound, and to highlight the facial alteration, and then to target the treatment in a very precise way to permit the patient to be cared in the perfect way. To do that, we need also to understand the fascia from a microscopic point of view, to understand how the aging or the food or the style of life can change our fascial tissue. And I dream to have, for example, some drugs that can achieve the fascial alteration and change the facial alteration, uh, restoring the healthy tissue. That will be a fantastic result for the people because we can really care the pain of the patient in a more permanent way. Thank you very much. So before we finish, is there any acknowledgement you would like to make? Oh, I wanted to thank all my team because they support me all the time. Uh, there is uh, Carmelo Pirri, Caterina Fede, Lucia Petrelli, my brother Antonio Stecco, my father Luigi Stecco, that is uh, the creator of fascia manipulation technique and uh, has pushed me to study more about fascia. But uh, I need to thank uh, all of the fascia manipulation teachers. We have uh, more than 50 teachers around the world that in the different country are spreading my research everywhere. And all the people that start to be interested in fashion and support me with their enthusiasm. So Dr. Steko, what is the biggest challenge that we are facing in the current situation regarding fascia? I think that uh, is the changing of how to approach the patient. Because uh, above all, in the occidental medicine, uh, we have learned to split the patient in many different pieces. So we have a fantastic specialist of the liver, of the knee, of the spine, but we have forgot to analyze and to see the patient in the global way. With the, fascia, with the fascia, we understand that the internal fascia interact with the locomotor system fascia, that a knee problem can affect uh, the lumbar area or can create uh, shoulder pain. And only if we learn that continuity through the body and if we learn how, to, how the internal organ can create a problem in the locomotor system and the contrary, we can really care our patient. But there uh, is a very important changing in the medical approach <laughs> and because now we are used to analyze the patient in a fantastic way, but very specialist. With the fascia, we need to see the patient in a more global way in an holistic way. And that could be a huge challenge for the future. Great. I'm glad you are getting so much support. So we wish you and your team the best luck for your future research. And thank you again for joining us. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Bye.